Uh, I'm Dr. Alex Schichman. I am a board certified rheumatologist, trained in Russia, Germany, and here in the United States. Uh, been in practice uh, in San Diego since 97. I uh, have a PhD in immunology, and more specifically, my PhD is, was focused on infectious immunology. So prior to opening my practice, I was working in Scripps Clinic. I was a rheumatologist at Scripps Clinic, and around 14 years ago, I left and started my own practice. So uh, this is one of the first actually integrative rheumatology practices in the United States. So the whole philosophy of our practice is uh, trying to identify the driving force against, uh, behind autoimmune disease and treat not only autoimmune disease, which is a bread and butter of rheumatology, but uh, underlying trigger as well. And uh, most of the autoimmune diseases are triggered by infection. So that's kind of a junction between infectious world and autoimmune world. That's the uniqueness of our practice. So when COVID came into play, uh, we started seeing a lot of patients with post-COVID syndrome. And uh, generally speaking, we can segregate them in a couple of clusters. So one cluster is uh, patients who are dealing with chronic fatigue. Uh, and so typically, typically, uh, these are the patients who recover from COVID, don't have any other problems, but they have daily fatigue and it's debilitating fatigue. So the second cluster of patients are patients who are dealing with actually various neurological problems. So like uh, peripheral neuropathies, uh, MS, uh, myasthenia gravis, and so on and so on. That's the second cluster of patients. Uh, then we have a cluster of patients who are dealing with uh, various gastrointestinal issues. And uh, so that's a separate cluster of patients. And finally, there's a cluster of patients who are dealing with uh, shortness of breath uh, and various pulmonary problems and uh, finally there is an overlap between all these clusters, right? And uh, since we focus on autoimmune component and infectious component, we've been trying to figure out what's going on in each cluster. And in general, in general, there's a trend in each cluster. For example, patients who have uh, mainly or predominant chronic fatigue, uh, they're dealing with a reactivated Epstein-Barr virus. And so uh, we don't think that COVID by itself uh, is a long-lasting infection. I think that it's a major stressful factor which reactivates whatever is hidden. So we all carry dormant infections no matter what, right? And these infections in general are asymptomatic. We don't need to worry about that. So like classical example is chickenpox, right? Uh, all human beings uh, probably without exception have been exposed to chickenpox. So what, you carry the virus your whole life. But if your body is stressed, you develop shingles. So the same is true for other infections. For example, uh, Epstein-Barr virus, which initially presents in the form of mononucleosis, it's a lymph blocking infection. So we all carry the virus. But if the virus is dormant, we're clinically asymptomatic. So what, we don't need to worry about that, right? But if your body is stressed uh, uh, in different ways, so then Epstein-Barr virus gets reactivated. And the first manifestation is fatigue. And so when patients come to us and said, well, we had COVID and we have fatigue, it's almost logical to find the source of fatigue. And again, most commonly it's EBV, right? So uh, in a cluster of, uh, for example, pulmonary complications, if they're dealing with shortness of breath post COVID. So we identified a couple of infectious agents which also uh, reactivated after initial uh, stressful event such as COVID. And we have a list of, of uh, infections, uh, most common are mycoplasma pneumonia, chlamydia pneumonia, legionella. So again, there are quite a few other things, but again, we're talking about what are the most common, right? So patients who have various neurological problems, they have another set of infections which have been dormant and got reactivated. The most common, most likely, it's infection caused uh, by Bartonella, uh, which is a cat scratch disease. Uh, infection caused by Bartonella hansoli, uh, sometimes Bartonella quintana. Uh, there are quite a few patients who are dealing with gastrointestinal infections. Uh, and again, these infections are dormant and then they get reactivated. So basically, uh, if a physician wants to be successful in treating these conditions, he or she needs to think in a slightly different way. It's not about COVID, it's about what got reactivated and how bring that infection under control and how to 
tune up your immune system to make it more capable of controlling the infection. That's what we do in our practice. That's great. Why would COVID reactivate some of these dormant infections? Well, it, it's a very good question, and uh, I cannot give a specific uh, biological details, but it's a, it's infection which creates a main stress or apply main stress on your immune system. So it's like a a bump, you know, dropped inside of your body, and it's a stressor which uh, creates uh, an environment where your immune system is not very functional. So and that's what's happening. You have normal immune system. Uh, your immune system is very well organized and is uh, kind of controlled by a group of cells. So uh, which it's almost like a state. So you have a government which controls different operations. It's the same organization, you know, the same principle can be applied to immune system. So if that, you know, uh, basically the dominant uh, cluster of cells are not very functional, uh, then all these little subset of your immune cells start misbehaving. And so because of that, uh, dormant infections which are controlled by a well-organized immune system, uh, they feel like uh, they can flourish, and so that's what exactly happened. Like, you know, you eliminate general, which controls the whole army, so then the army becomes dysfunctional, and so that's what happens. That's great. And what are the most common reactivations that you are seeing? Uh, if we create like a ranking system, so I would say probably Epstein Barr virus would be number one in my practice. At least, again, it, it all depends on what you see. And so uh, that's number one. So uh, uh, Bartonellosis, uh, which is infection uh, due to Bartonella Hansel or Bartonella Quintana, probably would be number two. So uh, number three, uh, I would say probably, uh, you'll be surprised, there'll be uh, infection due to Legionella pneumonia. So we see so many Legionella this year like never before. And I thought I'm losing my mind, so I started uh, looking publication from other countries and found that apparently we're not alone. So there was a huge spike of Legionella infection. So and it's infection which affects your lung and can co cause chronic bronchitis. And then after that, probably I would say mycoplasma pneumonia, chlamydia pneumonia. So these are probably five most common infections which we see right now.